Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on technical indicators. So in this video, I'm going to show you what are some of the favorite indicators I use to increase the probability of my trades. So understand that most of these technical indicators are really for short-term trading. And if you're more of a medium to long-term investor, this doesn't really apply to you. So before that, please read the disclaimer. And once you're ready, let's begin the video. So if you look at a charting software like a Think or Swim, you notice that there are really hundreds of indicators. In fact, there's about 300 indicators. And we can use these indicators to anticipate the probability of certain price movements. So again, remember that we are not using it to predict future prices. It is to find what's more probable. And that's because no one can predict the market. And understand that all these indicators are based on historical data. So they are all lagging in nature. They don't lead the market, they lag the market. So let me show you some of my favorite indicators I use and some of them are more for trend following. Some of them are more for counter trend trading, which is a bit more advanced. So unless you're really experienced or in WA professional, you may not want to attempt that unless it's paper money. So for trend following, uh, these are my favorite indicators. We've got moving averages that tell us the direction of the trend. Okay, we have got the force index that tells us how strong the force is, uh, which is based on volume, and MACD as well, that tells us whether the momentum is bullish or bearish momentum. And the parabolic size is also a momentum indicator. So the indicators you see on the left basically are used in trend following. They tell us when momentum is in our favor. The indicators on the right are known as oscillators. Uh, what's an oscillator? You know, think of kind of like a pendulum. When you pull the, the pendulum all the way to the right, what happens? It tends to swing back to the center and back to the left again. When it goes too much to the left, it swings back to the right. It's like an oscillator, right? Uh, going between two extremes. So you notice that price action moves in the form of waves. Okay, it goes up. We call it the impulse, they retraces, and impulse again, retraces again. Let me kind of like draw it over there, right? So it's got impulse, retrace, impulse, retrace, impulse, retrace. There's an uptrend. On a downtrend, it's the same thing. You've got impulse, retrace, impulse, retrace, impulse, retrace. So think of the impulse kind of like a breathing out. So you breathe out, you can't breathe out forever. You have to breathe in uh, before breathing out again. Okay, if it's in a consolidation, it goes something like that. So no matter what, there's, there's kind of like a wave pattern, right? When it gets too high, it tends to have to retrace back. The pendulum has to swing back to the mean. Okay, if it gets the same thing, uh, too low, it has to retrace back to the mean. So how do we measure whether the price is kind of like overbought and ready to come back down or oversold, ready to come back up? We use oscillators that may measure overbought and oversold conditions. So some, some of my favorite oscillators would be the stochastics oscillator, the full stochastics, a Bollinger Bands. MACD can also be used as an oscillator and as a trend following tool. And of course, the Williams percentage R. So let's take a closer look right now. All right, so the first indicator is the parabolic stop and reverse, or the parabolic SAR. And this is basically a very powerful, a trend-following indicator that tells us whether it's bullish momentum or bearish momentum. And simply, when the dot, the black dot, which is the parabolic SAR, is below candles, it is bullish momentum. And when the dots are above the candles, it's bearish momentum, as you can see over here. So this indicator works really well when the price is trending, either up or downtrend. But it may lead to many false signals when the price goes sideways. When it goes sideways, you get a buy, you get a sell, you get a buy, you sell, and then you're losing money, right? So you can't use these indicators by themselves in isolation. They are very sensitive and create a lot of false signals. They should only be used in conjunction with the price trend, which we determine from the moving averages and the price pattern, higher highs or higher lows. So let's move on. The next indicator would be the force index. 
And the force index is calculated from three things. Number one, the direction of the price changing. So if it's moving up, the force is positive. If it's moving down, the force is negative. Number two, the extent of the price change. The bigger the price change, the bigger the force. Okay? And the third thing is volume. The higher the volume, the higher the force. The lower the volume, the lower the force. So force index is calculated by taking the closing price of today and deducting yesterday's closing price and multiply it by the volume. Okay? So it kind of tells us how much force is behind the price. So if you look at the stock over here, you can see that um, there's a zero line. And anytime the black line, which is the force index, I take a 13-day force index, which is the average of the last 13 days of volume. Okay, When the black line or force index is above zero, it's bullish momentum. If it's below zero, it is bearish momentum. So obviously, if I'm going long, I want to have more bullish momentum than bearish momentum. If I'm going short, more bearish momentum. All right. So besides that, you can also look for the divergence patterns. So in other words, when price is going up and price is making higher highs, as you can see, higher highs, ideally, you want to see the force index making higher highs that tells you that higher prices are supported by a stronger volume, okay? Now, in this case, you can see prices making higher highs and the force index making higher highs, but the second phase, as the price makes higher highs, the force index makes lower highs. So that tells you that as prices go up, there's less and less volume supporting the price, and that makes it more risky to enter a long position over here. Of course, you're, if you're already long, then it doesn't mean that when force index goes down, it does not mean that you have to sell because force index is really sensitive. It could go down and move up again. Okay, But the moment force index crosses below the zero line, it tells you the force has become negative. So you may want to exit an investment or trade if you're already very profitable, like you at least have two or three or four R. Of course, if you don't even have that, then you can just stay in the trade. So this is the force index and the parabolic start together. If you look at the entire chart, you can see that this is a clear medium term uptrend where the 50 is above the 150. So if you're a medium term investor, you can just, you know, just hold it all the way. No worries, right? But if you, are, if you want to fine tune your entry to get in just when momentum is bullish, you can get in when the force index is spiking up over here above zero and parabolic SAR is bullish, all right, over here. It's bullish, it's bullish. So that could take a, be a time to take a long entry over there, okay? And uh, again, if you're a long-term investor, medium-term, you can just hold it through. Uh, but if you are not, then you obviously would not want to enter uh, over here because at that time, although the uptrend is up, momentum is still bearish. You want to catch it when momentum turns, when parabolic star goes bullish and force index crosses back above zero. Okay, so one of the most popular indicators would be the MACD or the Moving Average Convergence Divergence. And you've seen it in the Wealth Academy. It's a below over here. And you can choose MACD by itself, which will give you uh, the black line and the red line. Or you can choose MACD with histogram where you also get the black bars and the red bars. It's really up to you. It depends on what you like because they both tell you the same thing. Well, MACD is a trend-following indicator, but it's also an oscillator, right? And it basically is calculated by showing the relationship between two moving averages, uh, which is the 12 EMA and the 26 EMA. Uh, so for the MACD, we place our settings 12, 26 and 9 and what basically this means is that it's comparing the 12 EMA to the 26 EMA Normally we look at the 2040 EMA. So the 12 to 26 is even shorter than the 2040. So it's more um, again more reactive Okay, and then the MACD is calculated by subtracting the 26 EMA 
from the 12 EMA line. And that's how we get this black line, which is the difference between those two moving averages. Now we take that black line and we plot a 9-day exponential moving average of that MACD. And that new line is called the signal line, which is the red dotted line. So essentially, that is how these two lines are derived, okay? Now, how do we use it? Well, first, we look at the MACD line and the signal line cross over. So when the black line cross, crosses above the red signal line, we have got bullish momentum. When the black line crosses below the red signal line, we've got bearish momentum. It's as simple as that. So once again, before we go long, we want momentum to be bullish. That is ideal. And before we go short, bearish. Yeah. And notice when the black line crosses above the signal line, we have got the black histogram coming up. When the black line crosses below the red signal line, bearish histogram going down as well. So you can look at either the black and red line or the histogram. They both tell you the same thing. Now, another way to use MACD is this. Well, I just explained this one, which is the MACD line and the signal line crossover. So that's the first way to use it, basically, right? The second way to use it uh, is looking at the MACD line and whether it crosses above or below the zero line, okay? Um, where's the zero line? The zero line is over here. That's the zero line, okay? So whenever the black MACD line is above the zero line, it tells you that the 12 EMA is above the 26 EMA, which is a very short term uptrend. When the black line crosses below the zero line, the 12 EMA is below the 26 EMA, which, which is a really short term downtrend. Now, personally, I do not use it in that way, but just to explain to you, well, that's how some people like to use it because I prefer to use the 2040. I find the 12 to 26 it's a bit too fast, it creates a lot of false signals in reading trends, but it's good for momentum. Right? So in fact, you can see the relationship. Um, this is the 12 EMA red line, the black EMA 26 line. Right? And you can see over here, when the 12 EMA crosses below the 26, the black line goes below zero. Right, And when the 12 EMA crosses above the 26 EMA, the black line crosses above zero. So this indicates change in trend. Again, I don't use this personally because I prefer the 2040 and the 5150. This is a bit too fast of a trend change. A lot of false signals, right? Now the third way is also a way which I use it, which is to spot divergence patterns. And again, there's a whole video on divergence, so please watch that video on divergence patterns patterns and we look for divergence between the price trend and the MACD trend. So when you see that the price of the asset is making higher highs, right? you connect this swing high to this swing high, it's making higher highs. Okay, But if the corresponding swing high on the MACD is going down, that means price is making higher highs but MACD is making lower highs, and that is an indica indication of bearish divergence, which means there's an anticipation the price will reverse down. But of course, you have to wait for a confirmation candle or a bearish reversal candle if you want to do a counter trend short trade, which again, you should only do if you're an experienced trader. If you're a beginner, you may not want to do it. This is an example for bullish momentum. Okay, so for bullish momentum, it's the opposite. For bearish momentum, we always connect swing highs. For bullish momentum, we always connect swing lows. Okay, so if you notice, the price is making lower lows. Right, connect the swing lows and it's making lower lows, but the corresponding MACD is making higher lows. So I see a divergence, which tells me there's a high probability prices will reverse up temporarily. Okay. Again, I have to wait for a bullish confirmation candle or a bullish reversal signal. And if you go long, it's a counter trend trade. It's a bit more risky. Do it if you're more experienced. Okay? 
Great. Cool. Let's move on. Okay, now let's take a look at oscillators, right? One of them is called the Full Stochastics Oscillator and it's useful for identifying overbought and oversold levels within a trend. So again, if you take a look at, uh, this is an uptrend, right? And on an uptrend, again, what happens is the price uh, goes through what we call an impulse wave, retracement, impulse, retracement, impulse, retracement, and the story continues, right? Breathe out, breathe in, right? Now, here's the thing. Sometimes when it breathes out, or it goes up, it goes up a bit too fast, too high, too fast. It is overbought, overbought, and we expect it to retrace back down to the mean, like a pendulum, okay? And similarly, if it goes too low, too fast, it is oversold on the uptrend and will tend to bounce back to the mean. So this oscillator finds oversold and overbought levels. And let's see how it works. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go through the exact details of how it's calculated. It's very technical. If you want, you can Google, read about it. I'm just going to tell you how it works. Okay. So basically, in the stochastics oscillator, you have got uh, the percentage K line and the percentage D line, right? And that's the brown one, percentage K. Percentage D is the blue one, okay? So we have got this line here and the line here. It's like a range, okay? And this is 80 and this is 20. So anytime you have got the percentage K and D above 80, it's overbought. Price is a bit too high for now. will tend to retrace back down. What goes up must come down. And when it's below 20, it is oversold, right? It tends to bounce back up again. Now, it's important again that you can't use these oscillators in isolation. You have to use them in the right context. And let me tell you how amateurs misuse them. Like some people, they say, wow, okay, so if it's overbought, right, I short sell, okay? Now, you can't do that. Why? Because... When a price is very strong, when it's very bullish, it can remain overbought for a very long time. So overbought can stay overbought for a very long time. So you short it, it can still go up and lose you a lot of money. Okay. Similarly, if, if it's below 20, say it's oversold, well, I was going to buy it, right? But if it's on a downtrend, the price keeps falling like crazy, oversold can remain oversold for a very long time, right? So, you know, you buy and it keeps going down, going to lose a lot of money. So you can't use this by itself. You have to use it together with, right, support resistance and trends and moving averages and use them at the right time. So again, let me give you an example. So this is on an uptrend. And how do I know it's on an uptrend? Because the 50 is above the 150 moving average, right? The 20 is above the 40, for example. So it's an, on an uptrend. Uptrend we go long. That's what we buy on an uptrend. That's right. Okay. And when do we want to buy? We want to buy when it bounces off a certain support level. All right. So in this case, notice that it goes uh, impulse retraces and this is a support level. The support is the 50 moving average. And at that support, if the stochastics is below 20, then we can take a long entry. Because it's oversold, right? It will tend to bounce back up but it's in the right con context, it's on an uptrend. So that's fine. It's at a support level. So all stars must be aligned. Okay? Here's another example, right? So over here, um, price is on a downtrend. So downtrend, it's, it's again a wave pattern like that, right? So you've got impulse, retrace, impulse, retrace, and it retraces to the 50 moving average which is a resistance, all right? So it hits the 50 and it comes down, all right? Could we, could we do a short over there? Yeah, sure. Short the downtrend, short at the rally, hits a resistance and stochastics overbought, which means again that overbought, you tend to come down, we can short it over there. So again, you must know when to use the indicators in the right context. You can't use them by itself. So that's a stochastics oscillator, okay? 
Another indicator that I use, and but I have to say that this is more for very short-term trading and more for counter-trend trading. Uh, so if you're not very experienced as a trader, you're a newbie, uh, you may not want to use this, but it's good to know it's general knowledge, right? So what are Bollinger Bands? Uh, Bollinger Bands are another way to indicate overbought and oversold conditions, okay? And usually I will use the 20 simple moving average on the price two standard deviations. So what the software does is that you plot a 20 simple moving average on the price and you'll take two standard deviations on the top and two standard deviations at the bottom and then plot these upper and lower boundaries called the Bollinger Bands, okay? So these Bollinger Bands act like support and resistance. Notice when the price goes to the Bollinger Bands, it faces resistance and comes down, faces resistance and comes down, resistance comes down, resistance comes down, support, 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 okay? And they also indicate overbought, oversold. So normally when the price is... Uh, Above the upper Bollinger Band, like in this case, it is overbought, so it tends to come back down. Okay, when the price is uh, piercing below the lower Bollinger Band, it is oversold, it tends to go up again. So, once again, you can't use this on its own in isolation, you have to use this in conjunction with the right candlestick patterns and the right trends based on moving averages. Okay. So those are the Bollinger Bands and um, so sometimes also if you want to take a long trade, long trade or go long and you notice that the entry price is very near the upper Bollinger Band, maybe an idea not to go in. And if you want to go short, if it's very near the lower Bollinger Bands, you may want to avoid it as well. Okay. Here's an example of how I use Bollinger Bands in counter trend trading and this is more for really short-term professional level trading. But just to share with you, uh, over here you see that the price has gone above the upper Bollinger Band, right? Telling us that it is over bought, all right? And we have got what we call a bearish pin candle, bearish pin candle, right? So there's a probability that it's gonna reverse back down over there. So we can definitely do a short, we can do a sell short there, we can put a stop loss over there. But we have to ensure that it can reach at least 2R, okay, before hitting a support and going higher. Because remember that if you short this, you're shorting on an uptrend, which is dangerous. <laughs> because if you short an uptrend, yeah, it can go down temporarily, but if you don't get out in time, it's going to hit the support and continue the uptrend, all right? But those are some of the things that I do at the WA professional level and experienced trainer level. Uh, here's another example. Um, you can see over here the the candles outside the lower Bollinger Band and it's a bullish pin so there's a probability it will retrace okay so that could also be a reason to take a very short-term counter trend up okay another overbought and oversold indicator oscillator is the Williams percentage R and I usually use this um, for capitulation. And capitulation, again, is another video you can watch uh, on when to go long when price is really, really deeply oversold when the un last auntie has committed suicide. We're going to get in before it rebounds. Okay? So the Williams percentage R, I usually use the 10 setting and the 260 setting. And I wait for the black line to go below this red line which is the minus 80 line and this black line to go below the minus 80 line which is again oversold on a short term and a long term basis okay and at that point it's oversold over here right if i have got a bullish pin or i've got a bullish candlestick pattern like a morning star i've got a one white soldier I could do a short-term counter trend trade up, but it's good to get out before it hits a resistance because on a downtrend, it could continue the trend, all right? 
So these are just some of the ways how I use these different indicators. So for final word, let me just say that while you, well, I, I share with you all these indicators, it doesn't mean that the more indicators you put in, the better. No, it's kind of like cooking, right? There are times you put in garlic, there are times you put in ginger, there are times you put in soy sauce. If you're going to dump everything in your condiment shelf into the soup, you're going to get a stomach ache. It's going to taste horrible, okay? Because sometimes two indicators will tell you the same thing and sometimes they'll contradict. So you have to know when to use which condiment for which soup. So please stick to the specific setups I taught you in Wealth Academy. So in Wealth Academy, you learn that on the uptrend, you're going to go along, look at what? Parabolic SAR, Force Index, MACD. Two out of three are bullish, go along. If you've got a bullish candlestick pattern, one out of three can go along. If you want to go short, wait for a confirmed downtrend. Right? Parabolic SAR, MACD, Force Index, two out of three bearish, go short. If you've got a bearish candlestick pattern, one out of three, you can go short, okay? And for other setups that you learn like capitulation or when you go for Wealth Academy Professional, you're gonna learn the Piranha strategy, you're gonna learn all kinds of Bollinger Mean Reversion, Parabolic, or the really powerful Forex strategies, then each setup will use the indicators in the right proportion to get the best taste for the soup, okay? So I hope this has exposed you more to indicators and you got questions, please send me an email. Happy trading. And again, this is for trading. If you're an investor long term, don't worry about indicators. They're not too important for you.